rice and cotton planters in the antebellum South owned vast tracts of land, and their wealth was measured by acreage and slaves. As the Union Army advanced through the South during the Civil War, many Confederate landowners fled their plantations. Abandoned land was confiscated by the Union and put under control of the Freedmen's Bureau. Now the South and the nation was faced with the question of how to transition from slave to free labor in a region and economy shattered by war. Even some Northern politicians had doubts about retaining the military occupation of the South and in 1865, President Johnson began to pardon former Confederates and restore all rights of property, except as to slaves, to white owners. Most of the former slave owners insisted that they maintain control of the workers, even if they had to use force. The freed people determined they wanted to be their own masters and they would not be treated as slaves again. Basically, the old social system had collapsed, and nobody knew what the new one would look like. By requiring labor contracts to be entered into by blacks and their employers, the Freedmen's Bureau tried to assure that both the whites and the freed people would be treated fairly. Most blacks had to agree to share cropping arrangements, whereby they gave a portion of the cash crop they raised to the landlords and purchased supplies from them at high interest rates. The sharecropping system that evolved in the South during Reconstruction trapped African Americans in a cycle of dependency and poverty. <laughs>